We're back again this week with Master Packer Thomas Allen. You won't want to miss this. Gun Talk Hunt is sponsored by Remington. And we love their support and thank them for getting the ammunition plant back up and running. You know, since 1939, Remington really has dedicated themselves to producing some phenomenal bullets like the Core Locked. We all know that green and yellow box. I've used them in 30 out sixes and 30 30s, and I just love it. 243s even. So they've got a wide range of offerings in the Core Locked and the Sirocco ammo as well. So if you want to know more about how Remington is helping boost ammo numbers, Find out more at Remington.com. Welcome into another Gun Talk Hunt. As you know, last week we hung on the words of Thomas Allen, and we are back with him this week talking about what needs to go into your pack. Today's episode is brought to you by Pyramid Air. Everything air gun. Everything you need, all at PyramidAir.com. ATN. Yeah, it's the future of optics. And Remington. It's all our favorite ammo, and we love them for getting us back into the game. And Big Green is back up and running. Thank you, Remington. Okay, we're back with Thomas Allen. And where we left off last week was we started talking a little bit about packs and what needs to go into them, what you need to dive into. And really, Thomas kind of left us with a really interesting thought as it was scenario-based, what you are going to encounter on your hunt. So, Thomas, let's pick it up there. Well, first of all, you and I have been spending way too much time together lately. <laughs> that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. <laughs> like, that's what, this is what it's all about. And, and, and if you can't, you know, Thomas Allen and I, we have, we have dedicated a, one hunt a year to each other. You know, mm -hmm. whether, whether we go to Iowa, uh, he comes to Oklahoma and, uh, uh, hopefully we've, we've drawn out by now. Like I'm going to go ahead and say it. We've drawn out for this Wyoming antelope hunt and now we got to start preparing and we got to start thinking about what we need to be packing and how efficient we need to make ourselves. Um, and I've got a really great story about this and Thomas Allen, um, but I will I can say, only imagine. I'm going to start this with a real quick story. If you ever thought about getting a dog, I'm going to tell you this story and I'm going to let you go from there. So there we were last night at about midnight. I'm, I'm dead asleep. And all of a sudden I hear the dog stays in the kennel right beside the bed. So he's sitting there and he's pacing and he's pacing. And I'm like, oh gosh, what's wrong with him? Why don't we go to sleep? He's uneasy. And I should have known at that moment things were going to be, it was going to be a long night. Mm. So then it hits me. You like that smell <laughs> uh, of, of like when you leave, like, like, let's say you leave a, a, like a dog takes a dump in your house and you don't find it for like two weeks. And you're like, what does that smell? That hit me at midnight last night. And I'm like, Oh no, this is going to be bad. And then I, th the thought did cross my mind, though, that my wife, I was like, ooh, maybe she'll <laughs> pick up this mess <laughs> and I could fake and go back to sleep. But I got a hand across my chest and says, do you smell that? <laughs> I go, smell and I'm like, dang it. And, and I, that means you get to clean it up. That's right. So if you're ever thinking about getting a dog, just think like. Is it going to make your life more difficult? Are you going to get less sleep? Because I was up for an, two hours cleaning up this mess that this German, he's a beautiful dog, but this moronic German short hair pointer left me a present in his kennel that I had to clean. That Now, I will give credit At least to my it wife. was in your kennel, and you didn't have to search for it. I mean, there's that a positive true. here. That is true. But I will say that was one of the longest nights I had because I sat there and now you're wide awake after you get all this cleaned up and you're running through the house and you're dropping crap all across the floor. Well, I will tell you this. When a dog uses the restroom that bad in a kennel, 
Mm. How are you going to get him out? You have to make sacrifices. Here are the choices that you have. You have one. Pick the dog up. That's only going to be one thing. It's going to get all over you. Or two, let that dog run through the house as fast as he can to the back door so he can get outside. How is that even an option? I mean, because then you're going to have some of those little splitter splatters go in places you're never going to find. Thomas, I did not say I made the right choice. I, I did not. I did, and I told you I was up for two hours, so you should have known uh, what I decided to do. I well, opened, in my house, in my house, we have a team recovery, okay? So that dog goes in the, in the bathtub and gets hosed down from the word go while the other person in the party takes care of the poop. Let's well, be honest. And we did that. We did that. We divided and we conquered as best we can. And like I lit light and candles at two o'clock. The neighbors thought we were probably having a great party over there, but it was not a fun time at the Jarnigan household last night. I'll give you that. That was yeah, brutal. I bet. <laughs> but, so anyway, I'm I'm back, and now we're talking packs. We're talking like what you need to pack for trips. Uh, Thomas Allen is is known in our circles for being the most precise. He 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 packs. The dude packs everything. Um, so Oklahoma, we tell him, okay, come to Oklahoma. What do I need? And Thomas, I think he's very diligent about, okay, I might encounter this situation. I might encounter this. What if it rains? I'm going to go ahead and bring all my rain gear. Uh, what if we have to change strategies and hang a tree stand in a mesquite tree that's only a foot off the ground? So he brings tree stands when I told him not to. Um, but he brings everything. I mean, like, with, is that a fair assessment? Uh, yes. And, and, and the next time that I visit you in, in Oklahoma, I will not be bringing a tree stand. Well, um, but I mean, I guess I could probably hang him on a telephone pole. And we thought about that. How... We actually well, thought about that. If they're far it, enough off the road, that is a viable option. And a lot of guys are like, no, huh? You, but when you're hunting with a rifle, that is a hundred percent on the table. Well, here, here's the bottom line. If I need to save some extra space, that's going to be one of the things that doesn't get packed. Yeah. And yes, I bring too much stuff. Uh, it, it generally doesn't all get used, but there have been times uh, where I, I have what I need and it just, it saves you from having to make a trip into town. It saves you the extra expense of yep. purchasing something. Uh, and of all the things I brought, Kevin, I, maybe you'll recall, this is our hunt last fall. I forgot orange vest. Yeah. Of <laughs> so, all the things. You know, of all the things. Did you, and, you, never, had to, you never found those? Uh, yeah, they were here at the house. Okay. All right. Yeah. That makes but me, we did. We had to, that makes we, me feel better. We had to go in and buy those cheap little, uh, you know, uh, Velcro little strap in the front type vest. So well, Tommy and I could get on that was go. That was a benefit to ha going with a guy that, also likes to be prepared in the right areas and i had some for you as well listen it just so, comes down to the the old cliche that i'd rather have it not need it than yep. need it not have it that's true and so guys heading in so i drew out i'm i'm going to get into all my draws at another time but i drew out for some hunts already and i'm looking at being prepared and and what i need and I will not lie to you. Hunting is expensive. <laughs> it can I, be. I'm going to tell you right now, boots are expensive. And and there's break-in periods that you need to do. Like, And you need to do that now. And I am woefully underprepared to encounter this. Like, I purchased a pair of crispy Nevada GTX boots. They are expensive, and I like it. It's like it pains me to hand over that money, but I know that those like, f like your feet, are important on hunts. Like it is so important. Like if you, but it's also so easy to overlook that. It's, it is. You have so many other things that you've got to manage and and uh, whatever. Uh, but if if you can't get to where you need to be, then none of it matters. Right. Exactly. Well, and I, so. So before I purchase boots, I, I want to do a quick inventory. And I, and I think I recommend this on, on any any time anybody is going out on an excursion or they're, they're, I, 
highly recommend lining out all your gear and evaluating it each year. Um, and I lined out all my boots that I have, all of them, before I purchase these boots. And I look at them and I go, okay, those are great boots. I love those boots. I don't want to get rid of them. They are no longer waterproof. Like, and I would, I can remember the moment I realized in the field, I was like, I can't ever wear these again. And then I'd go down the line and I do that. And I come to find out, I realize I do not have boots that are adequate to get me through a tough hunt and that it killed me to buy new ones, man. It did. Oh, no, well, it's an investment that, that you're not going to regret because the reality is if you're able to get through a hunt, especially uh, through demanding uh, terrain that requires you to walk a lot, you're going to be real grateful you had them. It might, it might hurt up front, Kevin, but you're going to be I glad mean, you did. And I, I've spent money that my wife has rolled her eyes at on, on backpacks and turkey vests over the years that oh yeah she doesn't well, understand. But there have been times we've been out there. She's like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. And, and uh, just hunting packs, you know, like encountering what you like, what you're going to encounter on a hunt is very difficult because the, the hunts that I – hopefully draw out for are all dramatically different. Um, I'm you're talking Colorado elk into Wyoming mule deer antelope. I mean, all these, all these factor into like what gear, what gear you need and what, like, where are the holes in people's gear? If I was going to ask you, where do you find the greatest holes in people's gear where it's like they're under underperforming? <clears throat> that's a loaded question and I, I don't think there's a single blanket answer but um i always take i think about the electronics i have with me whether okay. it's a rangefinder or a scope um it, it, and maybe camera gear but for the most part i'm talking hunting necessities not necessarily right uh whatever but i love to pack batteries for those items because it's never going to die in your gun safe and when you're testing in your backyard, it is going to die every time in the middle of a hunt. Yeah. Um, and as, as an example, this is a true story. So this past spring, I was turkey hunting with a, a good friend of ours, Mark Court, oh, yeah. um, and, and had his wife in the blind on, on her first, uh, it was her second turkey hunt, but it was her first turkey she ended up getting. And she was using my daughter's um, Remington shotgun, and it has a, a uh, True Glow red, red dot scope on it. Okay. And that red dot scope has been on that gun for three or four years and has killed half a dozen turkeys and the scope wouldn't turn on and we're in the blind. All right. It's, it's, we're past the point of, of fixing this problem. And I'm sitting there kind of panicking for a second. And I realized, oh, wait, I've got extra batteries in my vest. So I dug around and, uh, it's one of those, like those flat 23, whatever's little flat batteries. Um, so I was able to make a quick change there in the blind and it was, you know, no problem, but our hunt would have right. been over. Oh, had yeah. I not had those. So if, if it's a range finder, if it's a, a, a scope that has a red dot in it, um, you name it. There, there are multiple things that, that hunters take with them nowadays that require power. Keep that handy. The other thing, and I don't go on any hunt anywhere for any species without a set of hand pruners and a handsaw. Gun Talk Hunt is also sponsored by Timney Triggers. Get ready for hunting season by putting a new Remington 700 trigger in your gun. I've done this three or four times. It's probably about the easiest trigger I've ever had to install. It's a drop-in trigger and instantly improves your shot. So, if you are interested, and I think you are, if you're watching this show, you know how important trigger press is, and you know how important making the shot count is. So, find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. I think... It's stuff that gets you out of trouble where, whether it's paracord is highly important. And then the saw and the pruners. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But now I've gone through a lot of cheap pruners and hand saws a bunch. Yeah. And uh, what are you using I, now? I, spend, I spend the money on wicked tree gear. Uh, their hand saw is awesome and it will cut your finger off. So be careful. <laughs> Um, and their hand pruners. Those, yeah. those go hand in hand. I have two sets. I keep a set in my trail camera bag. 
Um, yep. And then I keep a set with me in my turkey vest, and then that will kind of transfer with me around the season now, in my different backpacks. See, that's an interesting – like, you bring up a very good point. You have different setups for species. Like, there's not – okay, this is my one backpack and it's going to go with me on every single hunt. Now guys can do that, but what I find, and I've done it because I've done it before, like this, that's the whole thing is that we've made our, we've made our mistakes. Please don't be like us. Um, (laughs) But it's, we do this dance um, to a fault. Like we were like, oh, I love this backpack man, this could, this would be a great coyote hunting backpack. It'd be a great deer hunting backpack. I'll take it, you know, all these different places, but you always like have different gear for those different hunts. And so inevitably you will miss something. So if you love that pack, man, save a little bit of money and buy two and then buy two or, or, or you can even buy a couple that fit the bill. And, And for example, deer hunting, um, it, it, in what we did in Oklahoma, I would take a different pack than what I might, um, for hunting here in Minnesota right. or, or in Iowa. Um, you're hunting the same species, but what you might need during that time frame is going to be different and how you're going to access that gear might be different. Yeah. Um, but over the years, Kevin, I've been able to kind of nail down, uh, just a couple different packs that I'll swap between. Now, I have a good buddy, this friend of mine that, that, uh, I went to a turkey hunt with in Wisconsin. He has... <laughs> He has a fanaticism about backpacks, and he has got piles of them. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and it, it's actually pretty intriguing what he is what he has found, um, and it's something I wish I was a little bit more in tune to. I think I've got myself figured out, but my friend Travis is very, very adept at the right pack for the right situation. Yeah. Like you, he puts in five to six Western hunts a year, uh, or applies for you know, and he'll go on oh, one yeah. or two of those. Um, so he's got to have, you know, heavy duty frame packs for packing out quarters. He's got to have a, a day pack for his, his white tails in Wisconsin and everything in between he might encounter. So there is definitely a list of packs to have, but I don't think you need to have seven or eight. I think you can get by with, you know, let's, let's throw a turkey vest in there as one of those, it, yeah. it, you know, three to four packs for about everything you'd ever See, need. I think three and four packs is, is good. And I'm, I'm one of those guys that's like, Oh yeah, I found this, you know, pack and I found a Tenzing pack. Um, and it was their turkey pack. They had foldable legs on it and everything else. And I thought that would be the greatest like pack out there for the, especially the type of hunting I do. And I, you know, I purchase it and I go out and I hunt it. And man, I was so, so disappointed in that pack just because like, it just didn't fit that bill. Like it didn't do exactly what I wanted to. Like I'd be going through brush or something like that. And I'd clip one of the legs, and then all of a sudden I got a leg sticking back, you know, catching every tree limb. And, you know, there's just. Yeah, but that pack has its place. I, I've used one of those too. Uh, and I can give you examples from this year where that pack would have played brilliantly right. uh, in a turkey hunt. Yeah. Did, wait, didn't I send you with that pack? Well, I probably. I kind of seem to think that, but I've. <laughs> I th- those those little legs that stick out. I've, yeah. I've used those before, and they, especially turkey hunting, they have a they have a place. I thought, yeah, I, I thought I'm, I'm guessing you might have. I think so because I was like, man, I'm not going to use this. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm glad and that it'll help. A gear junkie, take he can take it. Yeah. Well, w- not only that, you have a son that is very passionate about it, and I know mm-hmm. that he would appreciate that, you know, and, and, and that's another thing that you guys, man, you can sell this stuff, but man, there's guys out there that, that, you know, they just might not be able to afford it. And I do the same thing. I'll, I'll, man, I'll give out the gear that I'm, I'm just not happy with. And maybe someone else has a use for it. Well, and I'm the same way, you know, in, in, in my business, I end up with a, a, a pretty substantial stockpile of rods and reels and um, you will never find anything I have for sale. It's something right. that I will, run into a person that needs it more than me and then I'll give it to him. And that's, yeah. uh, you and I've been blessed in this business and I think that's the way to pay it for a hundred percent. Yeah. I know. Well, listen, there, there's a pack here. I've been dying to talk about this okay. because you, you, you brought up something I do care about and, and you're right. I, I, we talked about this last week. I have a cart that I push out into the, into the Turkey woods that has, you know, the blind on chairs and that's excessive and overkill for a lot of people, but <laughs> it serves the purpose when I'm filming hunts with my kids. Yes, okay. absolutely. And and anytime I'm going to be hauling filming gear, it's just nice to have something like that. But the best, and I mean this, I'm not paid 
by Badlands. Uh, I'm not affiliated with, with them in any way, shape, or form. But the best all-around deer pack for any scenario that you're going to encounter, whether it's Canada, the Midwest, the Deep South, or out West, uh, in my mind, is the Badlands 2200. Really? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I've heard you talk about this pack before. and, and again, I used my, it in Oklahoma this year. You did. Or last year. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, and it's just it fits all your gear in it. And I think that's one thing that you have your gear list dialed in. Now I do want to ask, like, so when you're packing this, uh, that Badlands pack, you know, do you have your gear list on like an Excel spreadsheet or <laughs> how, how do you go about that? Because I know you're very detail oriented when it comes to these things. Well, I can't use an Excel spreadsheet as an editor. You would think I'd have that talent, but yeah. nope, I don't understand how it works. Um, I, I <laughs> guess it's kind of a, it, it's a compartment thing for me. So I go through the compartments within the pack and I know, okay, this is where I'm going to keep an SD card handy. And because okay. I've got an SD card, I'm going to have a reader there in case I need to plug that into my phone. And okay, I better keep a set of batteries in there in case the camera I encounter. So I, I go through these compartments that make sense for me and I, I fill them up with, with the items that I need. And the main cavity generally stays empty because that's the stuff I'll pull out and, and either hang up to air dry or, right. or, you know, kill the scent or whatever it is we have to do in a case of deer hunting. Um, I've got the, around the waistband. Yes. As a bigger fella, I can still use the waistband <laughs> on my 2200. Um, that's where I keep, uh, an extra pull up rope. I mean, how many times right. have you been to a tree stand and that rope got chewed up by a squirrel or it blew away, or you're yep. hunting with a friend and there isn't one. So I keep an extra pull up rope in the waistband pockets. And then on the other side are those, those, the, the saw and the printer. Yep. So I, I organize things in my pack to access them in a timely manner. So I don't got to root through my bag, get to the very bottom just to get a pull-up bag, right? Or pull-up rope. I don't want to have to take my pack off to climb a tree stand. I want right. to walk there, get in that stand as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, there's two levels of contamination in a deer hunting situation. That's your scent and that's the sight. That's yep. the stuff the deer can see. If you're having to climb down that tree stand a bunch of times, there's a fair chance that a deer somewhere is watching you do that. Oh yeah. Um, Happ so, it's happened to me a million times. I load stuff in my pack based on accessibility and when I'm going to need them in a deer hunting scenario. Now, if you're traps in the, the, the mountains looking for elk, uh, you may not need a pull up rope and that might get swapped with something else. And I make sure the back pack has a, uh, a camelback water bladder thing. Yeah. You know, if you're not going to be, um, taking it off for a while and you're gonna be walking a lot of miles, you gotta have water, See, especially higher elevation. That's one thing that I am not used to doing is having mm -hmm. a water pack and that that part of it kind of stresses me it's not that like the physicalness of the hunt doesn't stress me it's the the what is going into my pack and a water mm -hmm. bladder is is at the top of the list and now i've got to go through all these water bladders and i've got to look at them and i got to decide you know how big do i need it um which is going to be and you don't want to accidentally open up your saw and leave your saw in your backpack and then that flashes open your water bladder <laughs> or 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 a knife i mean and and that's a big thing about it is is just where you put everything and and that's why i highly recommend i mean start early start early with this process start thinking about you know the area if you're unfamiliar with the area uh, like i am this year i am completely blind 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 to this unit that i'm going to go chase elk in i have local knowledge um which is very easy to get i mean you can call the game wardens you know call around and they'll they'll help you um they'll at least start sending you directions there's great mapping systems that you can use um to get an, an idea of the terrain uh but this is very mountainous country and i'm at sea level or below so it's going to be a grind um but i think it can get done uh, but, you know, here, this is a point where you need to be loaded as much as possible, but as as minimally as possible, because A, you don't want to wear yourself out taking too much stuff, but B, you want to make sure you have what you need and not have to return right. to the truck middle of the day to start over. You want to leave that vehicle or your, your camp and not have to return until you need to. Right. And, and, and the right pack is critical for that. Yeah. And it's going to be a, it's, man, it's going to be a six, seven day backcountry hunt um 
Yeah, but man, it's it's a little bit stressful for me. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like it's like that's why I'm taking the time to line out everything. That's why I'm lining out all my boots and going. That is not going to work. That is not going. Well, to work. you, but you you spent good money on good boots. Don't skimp on a good pack. That's Spend right. the money on a quality pack. You don't want zippers breaking. You don't want clips breaking. You want as much storage and packing options as you can possibly have. Um, and in the case that you do kill an animal. How are you going to get it out of there? Um, maybe that pack isn't going to be right for, you know, packing out a deer. I don't know. You you have to decide. Yeah, you got to make sense. Yeah, you got to look at and and that's one of the big reasons to you know contact, um, you know, local game officials and and research. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of these hunts, like they will tell you what percentage of like what the draw percentage is as the harvest percentage like so you'll have a good idea to go like what well, i think you always should prepare to for success um but man in this case i'm I, now i'm gonna look at i mean i'm probably gonna need a frame pack um for sure because but is that gonna be the pack you're gonna work with every single day or is that gonna the be problem. just to haul out an animal that's probably gonna be just to haul out an animal well and that's that's why we talked a minute ago about having multiple options um yeah. I have, I have one turkey vest. It's all I'm going to use, turkey hunting. Um, in fact, I've always – I'm still in the turkey mode, Kevin. It's hard to get out of it. It's hard to get Dude, out of it. It just I, ended. I've got, a, I've got my eyes on a vest for next year, and I'm glad someone finally did this. Uh, but Primos has come out with a – Will Primos – Wilbur Primos himself, the man that started Primos, a Will-designed – uh, turkey vest and it's a $260 turkey vest. And I'm like, man, that's a lot of money. I've never spent over a hundred dollars, probably maybe 60 on a turkey vest. They've all been relatively cheap, but the zippers break after a year and the box call holder doesn't keep the box call quiet. And it just, right. it accepts it. You, you, as a hunter, you buy that pack understanding there are certain problems you can't solve. This other vest that Will Primos has worked on, it solves those problems. Really? And I love people in the outdoors that identify problems or oh, yeah. or issues that you just accept as normal and they fix them. I nice. really, really like that. And this vest from him is something that does that. That's and it's cool. worth 250 bucks. It's worth it. Uh, and I think that's that's important is that we got guys in the industry that, that say, you know, they don't live with just normal. They just do mm-hmm. it. They just go, you that's know right. what? You don't have to live like this. Let's let's mm-hmm. better it. Well, Thomas, I, there, I, it, dude, I, we could get into a lot of those. those I know those, there are so many of those things. Well, and, there's and, stuff and that, that really it, it intrigues me to watch innovators work. And when I walk through uh, trade shows or, or, for example, ICAST here in a couple of weeks, um, it, it it really is fascinating to see the innovations that continue to come out. People address problems that 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 average consumers accept as normal, and and that's. I think that we've gotten through to a certain point where that, you know, okay, we can deal with life this way. We can deal with, with an issue on a product this way, but the, the passionate innovators that make up the outdoor space, they don't ever accept just success. They're always looking for the next step to make something better. And that's something as hunters, we all get to take advantage of and look for those types of things, invest in those types of things, because you can't skip on cheap boots. You can't skip, on a cheap pack. That's right. Spend the money on a few things and those items are going to work for you. And when the time comes to put it to full in to full on action, right? You bought it for this particular purpose. You're going to be so glad you have yep. it in those moments. That's hundred percent right. Uh, what is it? Buy once, cry once, <laughs> <laughs> but buy four or five of them. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Cry, cry four or five times. Then just do that. Hey, but, you didn't complain once when I showed up with a power washer, did you? No, I did not. That that was yeah. that was one of the items in his, you know, on the road kit that he he showed up with like this this small power washer, not like this monstrosity, not something you're going to take out and you're going to like wash the uh, driveway with. But he shows up with this power washer, and I'm like, oh my gosh, why has he got a? Power and washer? and he did flip me some garbage over that. I'm not going to lie. I did. To you. Oh, constant. And then probably rightly so. Then I found the use for it. So what he did was we cleaned the skulls. I mean, right after we he brought a pot, he brought a burner, we boiled the heads, cleaned them up right there. I mean, we went back all of us with like clean heads and I still have not 
done anything to that head, and it's sitting in my house and scent free. It gets beautiful. Well, and that's right. It right there. There's nothing worse than having to prepare European mount that's that's rot. I mean, right. that's just brutal. So I've always found it's easier to take care of them right away. But here nor there. Yep. Sometimes there are certain things in your pack list, whether it's a power washer, the right snippers and saws. Uh, the, the pull-up string is something I have used a ton. Kevin. Yes. Yep. So I take that I with do me the all same time. Thing. They help. Oh yeah. Well, Thomas Allen, thank you so much for joining us. And I My know pleasure. we're going to be talking again. I know, I know we are because, uh, I've, we've got to get our thoughts on, uh, when we draw out for this Wyoming antelope, we're going to have to get, once we get closer, We'll start talking about it. We'll start scheming on how we're going to get this done. But uh, you guys will definitely want to hang on for that. I'm looking forward to it, my friend. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Thomas Allen. This is Gun Talk Hunt. As always, keep those muzzles pointed in a safe direction and go on a hunt. It's fun. 